I want to share the process that I'm going to use to widen this frame about 10 millimeters. We want to be able to get this 1,000 milliamp battery and even this 1,300 milliamp battery to be able to slide into this tray. I made these posts a little bit too narrow, so I'm going to show you the process that I used to widen that using Rhino 3D and then printing on the MakerBot Replicator 2. You can see the H-Quad file here in Rhino 3D and what I'm going to do is switch to the top view and let's disable go ahead and disable some of these solids so we can work with these outlines and I'm going to switch to the top view and what we want to do in this design is basically widen this bottom plate as well as this top plate and then the arms. So we're going to do that by 10 millimeters. And this is the process that I'm going to use. Now, if you guys know Rhino 3D and have a better way of doing this, please feel free to post in the comments below. I'm always open to suggestions. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a line right down the middle of this Y axis. And what we'll do, we'll select the outlines that are associated with this bottom plate. You'll notice I'm leaving these four holes alone. Those are actually the four that we want to keep static where the multi-Wii board or the CC3D board can mount to. Okay, so that's selected. I'm going to go ahead and use the split command. And it's saying select cutting objects, which is this line. I'm going to hit enter, and you'll now see that everything is split up. So if I were to just go ahead and select this half of the frame, I have everything on that left half of the frame selected. I'm going to use the move command and go ahead and select right there in the center of the frame. I'm going to move it to the left five units which in this case are millimeters and we'll do the same with the right half of the frame use the move command again zoom in just a little bit move that five units now what we need to do next you'll notice that our 10 millimeter gap between the two we need to close all of these curves now there are a couple ways you can do this I'll, I'll demonstrate just two ways that you can do this uh, there, there are probably many others. And so one of the ways is I'll go ahead and turn on the points. So I'll use the points on command. Select these guys, hit enter. And now you can see our curve points. And what you can do is you can select two and then use curve through points command. And you can see that's drawn. Hit enter. And that completed this segment. I'm going to go ahead and turn those off. That's a little bit of work in my opinion. So what I'm going to use is the line command and just go down here and I can draw. So you'll see I'll just select here, draw across, and I can do that all the way down. One last thing we'll need to do is even though it looks like they're closed, they're not joined. So we can use the join command. And now if I select it, you'll notice that the entire object is selected versus if I do it here. And this is important because everything needs to be joined so that we can extrude it properly and get a solid. So I'm going to just go ahead and join every part of this bottom plate. And then we'll be able to extrude it. Now you can see our bottom plate. It's been joined and grouped. And let me go ahead and turn on the existing plate. You can see our differences in width. So now we're 10 millimeters total wider. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude our new plate. And we're going to do that by 3 millimeters. And you can see there we have it. So I'm going to go ahead and export this. And now we have our bottom plate here in MakerWare. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do a lower resolution print. Put the infill up at about 50%. Export it. We're going to export it to our SD card and then we'll print it on the MakerBot.
And here is our revised frame after we widen both the base plate, the arms, the top plate in Rhino 3D. We'll put this 1300 milliamp battery right there. See there's a little bit of room so we can slide that in there and now do a flight time test with this larger battery. And this new frame weighs about 25 grams more than the previous. Original was about 75. This is right at 100 with no electronics. So I just wanted to share the process that I used to widen this in Rhino 3D. I'm still trying to get my head around all the capabilities of Rhino, but it's been a great program for all of my 3D design and printing needs. So definitely encourage you guys to check it out. And if you know a better way to go through that widening process, please post your suggestions below. So that's it for now. I'll go ahead and get this wired up and then we'll do a flight with the 1300 milliamp hour LiPo and see how that works out. So until next time, thanks for watching.